we're just barely getting started and I'm already tearing up. This is probably why I don't talk about it because even now, even when I think that I'm through it, I've passed it, I've done the work, I've gone to counseling, I've journaled about it to death, you know, I just, I feel like I'm in a good place. It's still a very raw thing for me. It's still a very hard thing for me to talk about. What I want to share with you today is a bit of what it was like for me when I first got sick with chronic fatigue syndrome. I realized that I've never really told my story. I, when I was sick, I wasn't on Instagram, I wasn't using Facebook, I wasn't sharing my story, I wasn't sharing my struggles. All people have seen is me now, me healthy, me posting selfies at the gym and you know going hiking and doing all this energetic stuff and I think that's good and I think that's important and this is where I'm at now but it's probably hard for people to understand where I came from when they've never seen it when you've never seen it it's probably hard to imagine that I was ever even really sick <laughs> um, some of you might know I actually did write a book about this so you might be thinking why is it so hard but writing a book was a completely different experience and that was tough too it was um, but it's different it's different than speaking about it it's different than showing your face it's different than saying the words out loud um, and i think it's important that i say them i'm not sure how this is gonna go but i'm going to do my best <sighs> wow I was sick with chronic fatigue syndrome altogether for around 10 years-ish, uh, and it came on really sudden, really fast. I was about 30 years old, living in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, uh, and very busy. I worked full time. I was, you know, going to school. I was very social. I, you know, I was out on the weekends all the time with my friends. I was um, obsessed with going to the gym. I went to the gym five, six, sometimes even seven days a week. Sometimes even twice in one day. I'd get up in the morning go do a spin class and then after work I'd go back and do a strength training workout. I ran a lot. I went through big phases where I'd get up and run 10 kilometers every morning before I went to work. Uh, in the summer I do it outside and in the winter I had a treadmill in my basement that I used religiously. Uh, it was definitely not collecting dust. I worked really hard uh, and I didn't stop much. I didn't reflect much. I was very unaware about what it really meant to take care of myself. I didn't listen to my body at all. That was a completely foreign concept to me. I just went and went and went. So when I got sick, when it all kind of fell apart for me, it happened really fast. I had just done these back-to-back -back holidays. Uh, my husband and I went on this four-week trip to Western Europe, um, spanning a whole bunch of different countries, and it was just go, 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 virtually every single day. It was exhilarating but exhausting and then almost right after we got back i think within a couple days uh, friends of ours were getting married in mexico so we went to mexico for 10 days for that wedding and even though it wasn't tons of sightseeing it was a ton of partying and just again really exhausting and just really not taking care of myself so i came back from these back-to-back -back vacations and i had to go back to work the next day and i went to work and i was sick i was really really sick uh, and i thought it was the flu it probably was the flu so I went home, I was mortified because I'd just been off work for so long. I didn't know, you know, what my bosses were and coworkers. Well, I knew what they were going to think. It was not going to be looked upon favorably, but I had to. Um, whatever this was, it was bad. And I went home and I ended up being off work for a full week. This flu was intense. And I think because I was so run down, so extremely run down from those holidays that when I got this flu, it hit me hard and my body just really struggled to fight it off. And after about a week, I went back to work for a couple days and I felt kind of okay, not great. Uh, and then all of a sudden it was like it came back 
I was all of a sudden really sick. Again, all the typical flu type symptoms, nausea, headache, you know, body aches, extreme fatigue, um, just that overall toxic feeling running through your body. So I had to take more time off work. It was really stressful. And by this point, I'm sure my coworkers were really unhappy with me, but there's nothing I could do. Uh, I had to take off more time. So this cycle continued for two or three weeks where it would ease up a little bit for a couple days, uh, not feeling great, but better. And I think I could go back to work and then I'd be sick again and I'd have to take more time off. So it kind of became clear to me that this wasn't just another flu. Um, and I needed to do something about this. And I was running out of sick time really fast and worried about keeping my job. So I went to my doctor. Uh, she's, a, she, she's a doctor that I've been seeing for a long time. My, just my family doctor. I really liked her. I'd never gone to see her for anything all that serious, but uh, I enjoyed her personality and her approach. And even when she switched clinics to one that was across the city, I stayed with her. So I would drive across the city just to go see her just because I really liked her. So when this happened, I was really glad that I had her to go to. And I went in to see her and she you know, did the usual, ran a bunch of tests. <sighs> Breathe. Anyone who's been through what I've been through, uh, I probably don't even need to explain all this. It's just everything I've read since, it's just very standard, standard experience that so many of us go through. She ran all the tests, you know, come back in, all the tests are normal, everything's fine. Okay, maybe we'll run a few more those tests come back normal. And there's no more tests left to run, so it's just rest and take care of yourself and this will pass. So I'm doing this, I'm trying this, but it's not passing. And no matter how much I rest, it's not getting any better. And I'm missing so much work. I have no more sick time left. I'm taking time off without pay. So I need to do something until I figure out what's wrong with me. So I go back to see her um, and ask her if she would fill out the paperwork for me for my job so that I could take uh, a temporary leave of absence or you know reduce my hours somewhat or even just you know a couple weeks off a more long-term sick leave uh, something that I could bring to my boss um, uh, just a better plan than what I was doing just calling in sick all the time and Still to this day, this bothers me. Um, the look on her face. It, she looked at me like I was crazy. She was just flabbergasted. She's like, how am I going to support you taking time off from work when there's nothing wrong with you? It was the way she said it. It was um, devastating. Because uh, she was the person I was relying on. She was the expert. Um, and she didn't believe me. So if even she didn't believe me, it became immediately clear to me, or at least I decided in that moment, that nobody was going to believe me. And that stayed with me for years. So I quickly realized that I was on my own, or at least I felt like I was on my own. Um, and I just started doing a ton of research. I started looking at stuff online. I started seeing um, you know, people with similar symptoms, what they had done, and I became aware of some more comprehensive tests, more comprehensive lab work that you could get done. Um, it wasn't available in Canada, not as a part of our um, you know, public health care system, but in the U.S. there were these labs that you could pay um, to do these really thorough workups on you and just give you really comprehensive pictures of what's happening in your body. So I'm like, okay, this is the key. So I just started phoning up these labs directly and saying, what do I do? I want to use your services. So they said I had to work with a doctor in Canada that would be willing to um, request these uh, lab tests and you know sort of be the the middleman to send all my bodily fluids over and whatnot 
So they gave me a list of doctors in Canada that they worked with and I found one that was a three hour drive away from where I lived. That was the closest doctor to me um, in a neighboring city. Uh, and it was a private clinic. I didn't even know such a thing existed. It was a private medical clinic. Uh, growing up in Canada, we have this universal healthcare system, so we don't directly pay for anything. You need to see a doctor, you just go. There's never, you know, all you do is show them your card and, and it's all taken care of. Uh, but this was a private clinic, so the, our healthcare system wasn't gonna cover it, but I didn't care. So I booked an appointment, I went to go see him. Uh, and I know now that I was fortunate because he was a good doctor and he believed me and he was definitely willing to work really hard to help me. And I know some people go through 10 doctors, 20 doctors. Uh, I don't know how many doctors before they find someone that they feel good with, that they feel like supports them and believes them and is committed to working with them to figure out what's wrong with them. So. Uh, it really was such a gift finding this doctor at this private clinic. He practiced integrative medicine, so it was uh, Western medicine and alternative medicine uh, brought together in one, and he utilized both. And it also very much put a focus on working with the patient and having them involved, and I really liked that, feeling like I had some control over what was going on. So he ordered up all these tests. We did every test that exists. I bought this four inch ring binder to keep copies of my test results and I filled it. It was exploding, it wouldn't even close. Um, and it revealed all sorts of stuff, all these different imbalances and eventually, uh, quite soon, actually he diagnosed me with chronic fatigue syndrome and I hated this diagnosis. Hate is a strong word. Uh, I rarely use it. Hate is not a strong enough word for how I felt about this diagnosis. It felt useless. It felt ridiculous. It didn't offer any insight into what caused the illness or any prognosis or how to treat it. And it didn't sound good. Like my life felt like it was being stripped away from me. And my reasoning for this, the thing that I could tell people, the thing that I told myself was something called chronic fatigue syndrome. It just, it was infuriating, but it was the only diagnosis it seemed I was gonna get, so I had to live with it. And it was enough to get me a disability, a short-term disability leave from work. So this doctor, thankfully, happily filled out the paperwork and got me on leave from my job because um, very quickly going to work was just not an option at all. My symptoms kept going week after week, month after month. I kept resting and resting and resting because I was so extremely exhausted and I started to realize that I'd been running myself into the ground for a while and you know some people were suggesting it was burnout so I just thought you know, this is my body's way of telling me that I need to slow down, so I just need to rest. So, you know, I, I read so many books, I watched so many TV shows and movies, just anything I could do that would keep me laying down almost all of the day so that I could rest. But no matter how much I rested, I never got any better. In fact, my symptoms started getting worse. I had this extreme debilitating exhaustion that was made worse by any sort of mental or physical exertion, anything and sleep never made it better. No matter how much I slept, I never felt any better. And I was sleeping worse and worse and worse the sicker I got, just to make things worse. Um, I had this terrible brain fog and my memory started getting really bad. It got to a point for a while where I had to keep a stack of post-it notes on the coffee table by the couch where I laid all day. And every single time I got up, I had to write down on a post-it note on what I was getting up to do because I would forget by the time I got to the next room. And it wasn't that I might forget, it was that every single time I would forget. It was just like my brain was steeped in this thick, I, I, I don't know what, goo, like thinking was slow and hard. Um, I had headaches, I was getting sore throats all the time. I stopped drinking alcohol in a hurry. But in the beginning, before I had completely cut it out, I realized that 
um, I had these intense hangovers from alcohol. A hangover could last two weeks. It was absolutely insane. My doctor told me the alcohol had to go. I could see clearly the alcohol had to go, so I stopped it um, 100% for quite a long time. Well, I worked with this doctor to try and figure out what was wrong and to try and figure out how to fix it. It's really hard to explain what that was all like. Um, to anyone who's been through it, I don't have to explain. And that is the beauty of connecting with other people who face similar struggles as you because there's something just so magical about being able to look someone in the eye who's been through what you've been through and who knows what that particular type of hell feels like. But at the time, I felt so alone. I felt like no one understood. To, despite how much people around me tried and I wasn't reaching out to people online this was uh, 12 years ago um, you know I had Facebook but I didn't even have a smartphone um, there was no Instagram it was a different time <laughs> we weren't as connected as we are now uh, and every day it's gonna sound dramatic but every day felt like like torture to me like like my life had been stolen from me. Uh, like something really horrific was happening to me. Like I was being held underwater uh, and it felt like everyone around me, people who knew me, people who didn't, just people should just stop. They should stop, they should drop everything that they're doing and all come together and help me figure out how to fix this. And I know how that sounds, but it's how I felt. It just felt so extreme what was happening to me and just how could, everything continued to go on as normal, as if nothing was happening, when I was just frozen in this state of suffering and pain. I couldn't go to work. I, oh my goodness, most certainly couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't hang out with my friends. I, I, I couldn't do anything. All the things I enjoyed doing were just gone. I had signed up for a um, part-time master's uh, program and I had to put in a disability leave for that as well like just it felt like everything was getting taken away from me and we didn't have any answers and everything I read about this was so grim like nobody recovers nobody gets better um, and the longer you're sick the worse chance you have of getting better so it was like this ticking time clock like we need to fix this now we need to fix this every day that goes by I have less and less of a chance of getting better I now know that that's not true, but at the time, that's what I believed, and that's what a lot of what I read told me. So it went on like this for a long time. I was off work, I was at home, um, I spent a lot of time in bed, and then when I would get up, I'd spend most of my time on the couch. I was the poster person for desperation. I tried everything. I didn't care what it was. I tried Western medicine, Eastern medicine, bullshit made up medicine. I, I didn't care. I, on the slim chance that it might be able to help me, I was willing to give it a shot. My mind was wide open when it came to recovery and I was obsessed with finding things that might be able to help me recover. I was reading on average between three to five books per week and most of those were books on health and healing. I was just devouring books by the dozens, reading everything I could get my hands on, watching documentaries, going to the library, just trying to figure out how to heal, reading things about other diseases aside from chronic fatigue syndrome, like maybe there are things that people have done to heal from cancer, you know, or MS or something else that will help me also, reading books on diet, nutrition, just everything. I was spending thousands of dollars every single month. My supplement bill alone ran me about two to three thousand dollars per month. I was taking around a hundred pills per day of supplements spread out throughout the day. Plus I was spending tens of thousand dollars on testing. All these fancy American labs were not cheap and my doctor charged three hundred dollars an hour and my appointments could be two or three hours when I went. I appreciated the thorough hands-on approach that he did. I appreciated everything about him. I pretty much worshiped this guy. Um, he was my lifeline and I did everything he told me to do. Uh, and I was burning through money like crazy, but I didn't care because I was horribly depressed and I did not want to live this way. Uh, I actually knew that I wouldn't live this way. 
I wish I could say that I was going to just make the best of it no matter what and just keep trying and never give up. But I'd seen other people be sick with this illness and I've witnessed it just get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I've seen how it could destroy your life and it was already destroying mine and I wasn't gonna live that way. Uh, so I was depressed, I was suicidal, um, I was really, really struggling to keep finding hope and keep finding reasons to keep moving forward. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I found the energy. Um, I really don't because when I think about all the things that I tried to get better, it, it doesn't make sense because I know that I spent the bulk of my time in bed and on the couch, but on my good days or my better days, I could you know, drag myself out to see some different therapists or do some different things. You know, I wasn't completely bed bound or completely house bound like some people I know are, uh, and I am grateful for that. Uh, but so when I could manage, I saw anyone and everyone I could think of. I was going to colon hydrotherapist, massage therapist. I was going for Reiki, for acupuncture. I was seeing a chiropractor, physiotherapist. Um, I was seeing homeopathic doctors, naturopathic doctors. Went for family constellation therapy. I went to psychiatrists. I went to psychologists. I was seeing counselors. I got allergy testing. I even consulted Ayurveda. I just, I looked at everything I could get my hands on and I tried so many different things. I also, of course, played around with my diet. I did elimination diets to see if there was any culprits um, in the food that I was eating that might be ma making me sick. I, um, I even tried going raw vegan for a while. Incidentally, my hair was coming out in chunks. Um, I might've been doing it wrong, but it didn't seem to be helping me. And then I went back to like a omnivorous diet eating meat and vegetables uh, but no matter what I tried every single bite of food I ate was organic um, I only shopped at organic grocery stores every product in my house was natural and organic um, I you know I of course cut out alcohol and sugar and all processed foods And as a result of all these tests that my doctor did and of my own reading uh, and my own Googling and self-diagnosis, I became convinced that in addition to chronic fatigue syndrome, I had a whole host of other stuff. And some of it I might have very well had, some of it not. I don't think I'll ever know. Um, but things like candida overgrowth, leaky gut syndrome, um, I was hypoglycemic, uh, that I had a whole host of viral and bacterial infections in my body, some of them latent, some of them active, um, HV6, Epstein-Barr, I had adrenal fatigue, I had a clogged colon, um, that my hormones were imbalanced. Um, I had a low white blood count, my body was too acidic, I was lactose intolerant, gluten intolerant, a whole host of other food intolerances. Basically all food except kale, I became convinced, was making me sicker. And I tried so many different things. Um, some of this on the advice of my doctor, some of this again just from my own research, um, but I did hormone replacement therapy. I did months worth of antibiotics. I took antivirals, two to $3,000 worth of supplements every single month. I was giving myself daily B12 injections. I bought and installed a far infrared sauna in my basement and I used that as much as I could. And I bought a mini trampoline so I could do rebounding when I was up to it to try and help my lymphatic system. I went to my dentist to make sure I had no problematic fillings or anything that um, was leaching poisonous stuff into my body and making me sick. I did tongue scraping and oil swishing and body brushing and I got one of those light therapy boxes and I'd put it on every morning in front of me and then in the summer I would go lay on this reclining chair on my deck to get as much natural sunlight as I could. In the mornings I was drinking lemon water, um, when I was up for it I was making my own wheatgrass juice. I kept a tray of wheatgrass in the kitchen window and I would cut it and juice it. You know, I did el elimination diets. I drank coconut oil. Uh, I smeared it all over my body in case it could soak in and somehow heal me. I meditated, I was journaling, um, I was doing these special stretches that my Reiki therapist had 
recommended. I was doing alternating hot and cold showers for hydrotherapy. Um, I was doing juice fasts. I did every cleanse that I ever read about or ever heard about. I bought cleansing kits. Um, I did laugh therapy. I was eating uh, bee pollen and bentonite clay, these superfood powders. I removed all electronics from my room because that could be causing problems when I was sleep sleeping and somehow making me sick. I, when I ate, I counted how many times I count, chewed my food to make sure that you know, my body was able to digest it. I would sit and I would do breathing exercises to make sure that my body was properly oxygenated. <laughs> uh, measured my body's pH levels every day and I was always more acidic than the, body, than the books said I should be. Uh, I installed a water purification system into my home uh, because bottled water came in plastic that was leaching toxins and tap water. Don't even get me started on tap water. I was sure that was gonna kill me. I was sure everything was gonna kill me. By the time I was done with all my reading and all my researching, I was scared of everything. All food was bad, all products were bad, all activities were bad. It was just really, really stressful and exhausting and scary. So for about that first year, I was just in this healing bubble on survival mode, just trying to keep going, trying to read as much as I can and learn as much as I can and do everything that my doctor told me to do. But for that first year, I didn't improve at all. I convinced myself throughout the year that I was because I think I had to believe it. And if people asked me, I told them that I was because uh, I think I believed it. But I got to a point finally about a year in where I for whatever reason was suddenly able to take the blinders off and I took an honest look at my life and I realized that I wasn't one bit better than when I'd first gotten sick, which meant that probably nothing that I was doing was working and the tens of thousands of dollars that I'd spent had gotten me nowhere and I was no closer to getting my life back and my hope back. <laughs> And spoiler alert, I did eventually 100% recover. It took a lot of years. Um, and for a lot of years, I just kind of coasted because I didn't know what else to do. It wasn't until many years down the road when I just got so fed up with every day being a struggle that I just really, really buckled down again and tried a new approach towards getting myself well. And that took another couple of years, again, of just really intense work, um, but it worked that time. And I did eventually fully get my health back. Uh, more on that later. Thanks for taking the time to listen to my story. I think our stories have power and we need to tell them. It's uh, a way that we connect with others, it's a way we learn from others, and it's how we heal. Um, one day I hope to be able to tell this story easily and without any tears and uh, to just be fully at peace with it all. And I hope that something in my story was meaningful for you, um, resonated with you, I have somehow connected with some some piece of what you've been through and if you are facing something like this yourself uh, I really am sending you so much love and so much support and I hope that you also find what you need to get well uh, if you're curious about the things that ended up working for me uh, I'll put some resources in the video description you can check them out some links to some other videos and whatnot that I did talking about my recovery process uh, that's all for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe and the little gray notification bell if you want to know when my next video comes up, talking about the rest of my chronic fatigue syndrome recovery story. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.